Hello everybody, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. I hope you're all doing well. Today we have a decision to be made. We are going to sign a new central attacking midfielder and the decision is yours. One of two players that you will see at the back end of the video. So, on top of that, we've also got a new goalkeeper joining us and a new centre-back as well. So stay tuned for who those are in just a few moments. But before we go any further with the episode, if you could check in the description below, there's my uh, links to my socials, my Twitter and my Twitch. I'm going to try and be a bit more active over on Twitter. So if you want to follow me on there, it is in the description. And we are going to be live streaming over on Twitch pretty soon. I just need to get everything set up, ready to go. And I'll give you guys a schedule as to when I will be live streaming over there. It's uh, things like Football Manager, Ultimate Team, so that I can then take them from Twitch and upload them to YouTube. That's the plan anyway. So if you want to follow me over there, links are in the description below. But there was one comment as I checked through the comment section of last episode of new signings to join us here at Bournemouth. And uh, Onana, his name kept appearing. So it's only right I went out and bought him. He actually had a minimum fee release clause, so I didn't even have to, to talk with Ajax about the price. £29 million, pounds, Onana is our new goalkeeper. Welcome to the club. I've had him before in uh, in my De Graafschap save of last year. Um, I am not entirely sure about Onana. At times, I think he's one of the best goalkeepers you can get in career mode. And then other times, I think it's the comes out for crosses, the rushes out for, for, for crosses. When crosses get sent into the box, he'll always come out to get them or nine times out of ten. And I think that's one thing that kind of puts me off about having Onana in goal, especially at times when keepers miss them or just don't get the correct touch on them. Um, but yeah, we'll see how he gets on with us here at Bournemouth. So that is the first signing we made today. A new goalkeeper, the centre-back, and then potentially the midfielder coming in. You'll have to wait for later on. So, off we go into the first game of the day. Chelsea at uh, Stamford Bridge. And looking at the squad, I was thinking that they've got a pretty decent team. But it's nothing we can't beat. And there is our 11, of course, with stacked full of top, top talent. One of these players as well is going to be subject of a bid of Barcelona pretty soon. And let's just say it's a bid that I never expected to get. But into the action then we go. And seven minutes in, we were looking to use the wings as we often do. And Chelsea were caught out early on, but then they kind of got used to defending against it for the large parts of the game. And 60 minutes in, I just could not find a breakthrough. We were trying so hard to create opportunities and Chelsea were defending so, so well. And they nearly managed to find the, uh, the opening goal of the game. The ball was in the net with 18 minutes to play. But it was offside. Morata had scored it. And if I show you it here, you're going to see it. It's so close is this offside. It is the correct decision just. Hector Bellerin tracking him back there nearly played him onside. So if we'd have gone behind to that goal in a game where neither side really deserved to win it off the balance of play, we'd have been annoyed until a substitute came on. Thiago Almada. Nice play to get him through, and he finishes it off at the near post. Chelsea nil, Bournemouth one, with about eight minutes to go. So at this point, we were heading for three points, provided that we could see the game out. And the way that it had gone suggested that that was going to be the case. It was either going to be a boring nil-nil draw, or someone was going to steal it one nil. And that's exactly what we did from the game. And on the subject of career mode as well, while I remember, I posted a little uh, thing in the community section earlier on today, this series will be coming to a close soon. Well, I say coming to a close. What I actually mean is it's, it's a lot of work trying to keep three series going consistently. So what I might have to do is once we've played through this season, we are trying to win the Premier League. If we don't and fail to do that, I might have to then switch it so that we upload like a full season in one video. And instead of uploading like three episodes a week or four episodes a week, we go to like once every couple of weeks, if that makes sense to you all. Um, just because, as I said, I want to start streaming and... With the amount of work that it takes to run three series on YouTube, that just wouldn't be possible if I wanted to stream as well. So I'm going to keep the My Player, keep the Road to Glory, and then make this either once every two weeks as a full season, or just kind of, if we end up getting the Premier League title, just stop it there for the meantime. So I will let you know what, what the plan is a bit later on once I know myself. Of course, we've got to see how the Premier League goes this season for us first and foremost. But um, yeah, that's just an early, I guess, sign of what is to come. But speaking of the Barcelona bid, then that is exactly what happened. James Madison, subject to a bid from the Giants. And I went back in, had a little sit down with their boss and said, listen, if you give us £105 million, Madison's yours. 
Never in my wildest dreams did I expect that he was going to instantly come back and say, all right, then, yeah, no problem. And that's exactly what they did. So 105 million quid to take Madison from Bournemouth to Barcelona. He's sticking with a B, but it's a totally different country and a totally different team. And uh, you might remember, we played Barca, didn't we, in the Champions League and embarrassed them. So if Madison goes there, more fool him because they're not the same team that they were. We, we showed that in the Champions League final of last season. So we'll see what goes on with James Madison. But for the meantime then, we went into game against Leicester. And coming off the back of that 1-0 win against Chelsea, I knew we had to be a bit more creative in the attacking sense. And we certainly were. Madison with a chance there. Diving header. Keeper made the save. But at half-time, we were on top. And all we didn't do was find the goal, pretty much. Other than that, we was asking all the questions. Ryan Fraser, second half coming in here. He burst down this left-hand side, went on a run that in the end led him to have the shot. Kasper Schmeichel with the save. And even though we'd scraped the 1-0 win against Chelsea, we couldn't do it here against Bournemouth. We ended up drawing 0-0. And with the new slider settings that we've switched on, of course, for this series... I sense that this could be a recurring theme where it's going to be a lot more tough for us to be able to find goals. Because at the moment, that's now two draws already in a matter of four games, five games into the Premier League season. If you want to win the title, this isn't the way you start a season off. Let's put it that way. I mean, we're three games in, actually. One win, two draws. We're in ninth place. So, yeah, not the start that you want to see from us if we want to go on and win it. But confirmation of Madison leaving then to Barcelona meant we have a massive budget to work with. We still needed a centre-back. That was still one area that I was looking to strengthen. I didn't quite have enough to be able to go after the guys that you were mentioning originally. But with Madison now leaving, I could actually go out and act upon a couple of your suggestions. So one of those was Rafael Varane playing for Spurs, who have been behind us now in the uh, Premier League for the last three seasons. So Varane, or, or two seasons I should say, Varane was, uh, was certainly open to the idea of joining us here at the Vitality Stadium. £70 million bid accepted by Spurs. And all we had left to do was talk to him about the money they'd be getting paid here at the Vitality Stadium. And eventually, we agreed on quite a good deal, I'd say. He takes a pay cut to join us, which, if you didn't know, happens quite a lot in, uh, in FIFA. You don't always have to offer them the max amount in order to be able to get them to your club. So he's on 180 grand a week at Spurs. He took 140 to join us here at Bournemouth. So that just kind of shows you 40k less a week. And he was happy to... Um, to come and play his football here. Why wouldn't he be? Or 150, I should say. Sorry, yeah. I got that slightly wrong. Oh, no, it is 140. I was going to say, I I'm sure it was 140. Yeah, there you go. With a £1.2 million signing on bonus. 89 rated. Raphael Varane is here. For the moment, though, I don't know who is going to be our starting partnership of, uh, of centre-backs. Gomez, Ake and Varane are three very top-tier centre-backs in this league. And I don't really know who to take out. I think Gomez is probably the man that we will... Switch out for Varane for the meantime, but that's purely down to the fact that Ake is left-footed because I like to have my left centre-back left-footed, the right centre-back right-footed. allows us to play out the back a little bit easier. But um, yeah, Varane's place is definitely not set in stone purely because Varane is, uh, is, is you know, a better, I guess, rated player than Gomez because Gomez can hold his own. So we'll have to see how we go with our centre-back pairings. But with that, that was the last piece of business I was going to do. But there is one more sale coming up. So with that sale coming through, we then did have enough money to go out and potentially buy a new cam. And the reason I wanted a new central attacking midfielder was because of this game right here. We took on Newcastle at St. James's Park. Bearing in mind the start we'd already had to the season. And we were 1-0 down 11 minutes in. It was uh, the tail of the two number nines, I'd say, during this one. Andrea Bellotti for them and Lautaro Martinez for us. But Lotti gave him a lead inside 11 minutes. And with us being behind, we had to find a response. And we did just that. Almada threw here to Martinez. And I will say, this is a great finish. Um, there's not a lot of players in the Premier League that could do that. Because originally, when he gets sent through, it looks like the chance is gone. He, he's so far wide. Keeper came into no man's land, though. And Lautaro took full advantage of that, chipping it over the top of him. And we'll see it better from this angle. I've got no idea what the goalkeeper's doing. Came way too far out. There was no danger of, uh, of Latoro switching back and having a shot there. So he really didn't need to come for that. But as it stood, we were back to 1-1. And 37 minutes in, we bought ourselves the, the most stupid penalty I think you're going to see today. Because 
It's never a penalty. We get the shot away with Armada and the referee comes running over and says penalty kick. But I felt so bad for Newcastle because, yeah, if, if I'd have conceded this myself, I would not have been happy. There is a little shirt pull before that, but Almada still gets his shot away. And, uh, yeah, the penalty was given, but let's just say we bought that. So up stepped Lotoro Martinez. We were 1-0 down to try and give us the lead for the first time in the game at 2-1. Sends the keeper the wrong way. Calm as you like. Phenomenal penalty. Runs over and kicks the corner flag in celebration. So heading into half time. We were two and up and we were cruising. But coming back out in the second half, I stopped feeling sorry for Newcastle and started feeling angry because Bellotti, 2-2. Two -two. The two number nines have scored both goals for both teams. And this one, Onana for me has got to save it. I know we've just spent big money on bringing him in. But when you see it from this angle here, he gets two strong hands to that Onana and he pushes it into his own goal. I say strong hands, but he does get two hands to it. So, yeah. For me, should have saved it. And then, 16 minutes to go. Goal gaping. We hit the post. We hit the post. How does that not go in? So, frustratingly, we were heading to a draw at 2-2. We were pushing to try and find a way back into the game. In doing so, this happened. Now, I should have highlighted Varane a lot sooner. I, I don't know why he's tracking back all that way. He doesn't need to. The guy's offside. Sent Maximum is never going to play that pass through. He's so far offside that he just it, it was never going to happen. So, yeah, we should have switched earlier. And 3-2 Newcastle. And to make matters worse, it went to 4-2. 92nd minute, pretty much the last kick of the game. Belotti got his hat-trick. Newcastle 4, Bournemouth 2. A scoreline that not only did I not expect coming into kickoff, it's a real kick in the teeth. Because it's our first defeat of the season. This was supposed to be the year we really went for it in the Premier League. And I, I don't see it. I'm, I, 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 don't, I like to be optimistic, but I'm going to be pessimistic here and say I just don't see how we will win a league title with the form that we are currently showing. We're so inconsistent that if this keeps up, we might not even get back into Europe. Sure, we could put a run of, of games together where we're winning every game pretty much in the space of 10 games. But for the moment, that, that's not a result that wins you league titles. And I showed you this as well. Match facts, four shots, four goals for Newcastle. That's how clinical they were on the day. So we have to hold our hands up and say we should have scored our chances. But on some days, there's just nothing you can do when the opposition are as clinical as that. So fair play to Newcastle. 4-2 it finished. And uh, we are now, I think, 10th or, or something like that in the league. So I wanted a bit more of a creative spark. And we went out and we looked at two central attacking midfielders after the sale of Benitez, our former number one at the club. Um, because Onana's now here, he had no use. And we've got O'Donnell as backup. So Julian Brandt and Jao Felix are the two players. And I'm going to leave the decision completely up to you. Both available on minimum fee release clauses. Show you them here. So in the top right-hand side of the video today, there will be a little poll for you to have your say on Felix or Julian Brandt. So please do cast your vote. Make sure that it doesn't go to waste. So that's going to bring us to a close for today. A massive thank you for watching this episode of Career Mode. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. If you are new around here and like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below to follow me on the channel. And also check out the description for my socials if you haven't already. They are in the description below. Until next time, have a great day, have a great evening, and I will catch you all again for the next episode of Career Mode very, very soon. Adios.